of virtual Bible study, Walking by Faith Bible study. We encourage you, praise God, to just tune in, make yourself comfortable, but praise God, listen at what the Word of God is saying to us tonight through the scripture and through the teaching. Again, my name is Elma Harris. I am the pastor of Walking by Faith Missionary Baptist Church in the big city of Sims, North Carolina. Just in case someone is listening that may not have joined in or may see this recording at a later date. That song said, I give myself away so you can use me anytime, anywhere for your glory. It's all about God's glory. And tonight we've been studying, amen, in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 for a while. Praise God. And then the Lord led us over to Galatians 5, amen, uh, talking about the manifestation of the flesh as well as talking about the characteristics of Christ. So we thank God that we basically, praise God, have studied the manifestation of the flesh. We are growing up, amen, no more babies drinking milk, but designed the sincere work, uh, word of the Lord. And now we want to talk more intensely about the characteristics of Christ. And we know that we can only have those characteristics if the Holy Spirit lead and guide us, that we have put ourselves in a place of humbleness that God can work on our spirit, man, that we can die of ourselves to become more and more like he desired us to be. Amen. We ask Sister Jenny if she would give us our scripture reading for the night. Then we would ask Deacon Scott if he would pray for us. And we want to welcome each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join this virtual Bible study on tonight. I'll be coming from John 14. Starting at verse 27. John 14, starting at verse number 27. All right, Sister Jeannie. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and I come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come, before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Read John 14, okay. verses 27 through 29. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jeannie. She was reading out the King James Version of the Bible. Amen. Deacon Scott, would you lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we come before you this, this evening, Father, with humble hearts and minds, Father. Thanking you, Father, for this day, Father. Thanking you, Father, that you bring us, allowing us, Father, that we may come before you this evening, Father, with open hearts and ears and minds, Father, that we be receiving of your word. Father, we're asking that you would touch us this evening, Father. Even open our hearts and minds even the greater that we be receptive of your word. Father, we're asking that you would touch Pastor this evening. Father, we're asking that you would strengthen her, Father, in all that you would have her to do. That you would give us a word from on high for our behalf. Father, we love you and we thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen. We thank God, amen, for our scripture reading and also for our prayer. Praise God. And we want to thank you, amen. Uh, for tuning in again, as I say, well, we want to thank God, most of God, most of all for him being here in our midst tonight. And we pray that we will have a teachable spirit that he that has an ear will hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight. Amen. I want you to just, just give God some glory on tonight. Wherever you are, just clap your hands for Jesus on tonight. Just give him a, a clap. Amen. To let him know that you are thankful and that he loves you enough to learn more and more about him. Amen. As we were studying last week, we had talked about the fruit of the spirit of love and joy. Amen. And we concluded with peace. Amen. And the scripture that Sister Jeannie had just read to us, where Jesus told his disciple, peace he leave unto them, not as the 
world give them peace, but the peace that comes only from God our Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And we want to talk a little bit about that peace again on tonight. Amen. We know that peace, if we got that inner peace, the peace that come from God Almighty, amen, we are absent from conflicts, amen, and it's taking action to restore our brokenness, amen. We don't have to be worried about our broken situations anymore if God give us that inner peace that we need. It's a state of being, amen, in tranquility. Amen. Tranquility is peace. Amen. Happiness don't give you peace. But the peace that we're talking about is the world. The world has much to offer, but they cannot offer you this internal peace. It only comes from God Almighty. Amen. It's a state of being whole, a state of liking or wanting nothing. Amen. It's a state of being complete. Amen. As I stated last week, when Paul was telling the church, no matter what's going on, none of these things move me because I know that it's God that's in control. But God is in control, but he does not take control over every situation. That's why he given us a mind, a will. Amen. To obey him, to listen at the word. I mean, God puts the word out there, but he does not browbeat us to study the word. He gives you uh, the mobility or the knowledge that you can look at it, whatever you want to. Amen. But he gives you free will and me free will to serve him. And he is not one that will break his promises. Once God gives you that internal peace, no one can take it away from you and each one of us should be praying more and more each day god give me that internal peace god give me the peace that i need to endure as a good soldier all of these things that are getting ready to happen as i was listening to a little bit of the news today who would have thought that souls would be on the shortage who would have thought that the water Amen. We'll be on a shortage. Amen. That lets you know right there that prices are getting ready to go up. Again, sodas, amen, and water. If you've been to Walmart later, you used to get those 40 uh, bottles, amen, for about $2.97. And now what they have done is taken half of the bottles out and raised the price up a dollar more. So if we don't have Jesus on our side, if we don't have the inner peace that we need in such a time as inflation is going to go up more in 2022, if we don't have these characteristics of Christ bedded inside of us, amen, then these things when they come upon us, amen, it's going to take many out, amen, because you have depended on the government and the world system for so long and what God is trying to get us to do in such a time as this is to get on his system. When we get on his system, when we think the way that he wants us to think, when we turn our lives over completely to him, he will supply our every need. So he's still in control, but God is not going to take control until he's get ready. To take control. He relinquished rights to every man, indelible rights that we have. Not like the uh, government says, the uh, not as the preamble says, all men are created equal. In God's eyesight, you are. We all are in his eyesight. But by the world eyesight, that's not the standard that the world go by. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. And if you love me, you will rejoice because I see it. I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before, it come to pass 
that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. And everything now is coming to pass. So we want to talk about that peace again just a little bit tonight. I told you last week that we must have three types of peace. First, we must make peace with God. We've done a lot of things in our life and we can't even remember them all. So we have to go to God and ask him to forgive us of everything that we have done wrong in our lives. And the Bible said that he will separate our sins as far as the east is from the west. Now, we can't just say it out of our mouth, praise God, and don't really mean it in our heart because God knows everything about us. Amen. So we must make peace with others. Many that you wronged in your life. Many that I have wronged in my life. I had to go back and ask for forgiveness. Because without that forgiveness, amen, we got to make sure that our lamps are trimmed with oil. Forgiveness is one of those lamps that we have to make sure that's trimmed. Then after we make peace with God, we make peace with others, then we need to make peace with our own self. Stop saying that you are not good enough for God to use you. Stop saying that I'm unfit. If you go back and read the word of God, praise God, everyone that he chose to be his disciples had some kind of deformity or deficiency in their lives. But he chose each and every one and he chooses each and every one with purpose in mind that he can use us to go back out and witness to somebody that maybe had been living the life that you were living. To use them to see that if you were willing to change and allow God to work in you, guess what? Maybe, just maybe they would think then, guess what? He can change me too. But you have to be steadfast with this. Praise God. You can't be wish-washed. You can't praise the Lord today and then go back to serving the devil tomorrow. That means that you're on a roller coaster up and down up and down just like the waves in the sea god wants us to be steady amen unmovable always abounding in the works of the lord that our labor will not be in vain and i always tell everybody you don't know who is looking at you and what they're seeing i don't care how big a bible you have and you can carry it wrapped all around your neck like a chain if you want to but the Bible that most people read is you. They're not studying what the words say because the word is supposed to be the, the grinding force that changes us. And we allow it to change us. And the only way it can change us is that we get these characteristics of Christ. Every day we must die of our own selves. Every single day we must want to lay down our will and pick up pick up the will of god we must we have to we have to let go of ourselves our thought our minds our emotion our will and pick up the perfect will of god that perfect that work that will that he won't let any good thing be held from us that perfect will to know that god can trust you and i with anything in our lives Amen. He doesn't care about what you did on yesterday. His concern is what are you doing today for the kingdom of God? How are you building the kingdom of God? And you can build it with your own hands. What did he ask Moses? What's that you have in your hand? Moses was telling them all the arguments that the people were having over in Exodus. But he said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? We have a lot in our hands that we don't even see that we can use. Amen. We have things that we can do to help somebody else. Uh, it doesn't matter where you always comfortable. Because if you're serving God, you're going to have some enemies. Doesn't matter whether they like you or not. Doesn't matter what side of the track you come off of. 
It doesn't matter to God. What matters to him is your availability. Your availability for him to use you. Your availability to do the things that he have instructed us to do in his word. Your availability to lay down your fleshly desires and pick up these spiritual characteristics of God. Amen. And peace means in the Hebrew, Jehovah Shalom. Most people just say Shalom. That means when they greet you, they are saying peace. Now, man can tell you that they are saying peace today. And all the time, they're trying to figure out a way that they can do something to harm you. So you really can't trust man. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We put all our trust in him and know that it had not been for him on our side. Where would we be at today? You just think about that for a moment. Are you in control of anything in your life? If you are in control, what is it that you're in control of? I think I see you with your hand up. What are we in control of? We are not in control of anything. I didn't hear you. Yeah. I thought so. That's we are not in control of anything. We are not in control of anything. But what we are to him is that we can relinquish what we think we're in control of to him. The one that's able to do something with what we have relinquished unto him. And remember, he's the only one that can give us peace. Peace, this five letter word that is so powerful. I say pay, peace means pray, praise, A or E. Every second you think of him, amen. Every moment, amen. Pray, amen. A, accept the will of God, amen. Confess, see, everything that you need to confess to God, confess it and then let it go. Because he's not going to bring it up anymore. The enemy may come to bring it up again, but God will never bring it up again. And then the E, is for every will, every way, everything, give it to God. The one that's able to do something with it. We know that he is the one that can do all things. And we can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us. We can. He's given us that power. <laughs> Are there any comments or questions? I can't hear you, D. You're coming in and out. Okay, Pastor. Okay. Uh, many would say or un try to say or they're saying would be that, yes, I'm in control of this or yes, I'm in control of that. And that control would be our will, not God's will. When we allow God, Jesus Christ, to take over. Can you hear me, Pastor? I do. When we allow God to take control of our lives, then we're in control of nothing because we're supplying ourselves the availability to be what he would have us to be. We have the, and that's the whole thing about laying aside every weight, laying aside everything, and being a, when you preach availability, that's the purpose. Good analysis there. Because many would say this right here. Great example. Thank you, Dave. 
when I stop doing X, Y, Z, then I will do A, B, C. Well, if you had the will to do those things, you have already would have already stopped. But when God knows your heart, when God knows that you are available to be transformed, for your mind to be transformed, amen, for your thought process to be transformed, for your heart to be transformed, then God will begin to work in your life because he'll move the old man off the scene. And we cannot compare our lives with anybody else's. Because when we stand before the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, whoever you are comparing your life to won't be standing there beside you. And many people we compare our lives to may have done many things in the dark that we don't know anything about. That's why the word of God said we need these fruit of the spirit, the characteristics of Jesus the Christ, because he walked this world, amen, for 33 and a half years. And the Bible said he sinned not, sin all around him. But he knew that sin was of the devil, Satan, Beelzebub, the enemy, the adversary. He knew that. And so he had already kicked him out of heaven. And he knew the only way that enemy will have any power over you or anyone else is that we allow him to. He will start with your mind, with a thought. And he's just like a cancer. He will continue to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat away because what? Most people allow him to talk to them. You remember when, when the man was out in the grave and he was cutting himself and over and gathering. They had put chains on him and the chains and the feathers couldn't hold him down. And when Jesus came up on the scene, the first thing that those legions of devils did was jump out and begin to say, what have we to do with you? And the first thing that Jesus told them to do was be quiet. See, we allow the enemy to talk to us too much. We allow him to plant negativity in our mind and then it maneuvers down to in our spirit, man. It goes all the way down to the core of our heart. That's why he said, let not your heart be troubled. And you would think more that you are a victim instead of a victor. When Jesus already said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All we have to do is cast our burdens upon him. We cannot do anything of our own. We must relinquish every will, every emotion that we have unto God and let him mold us the way he wants us to be molded. And whatever you did in life and whatever I did in life, God can use that for his glory. Many ministries have come out of people that were alcoholics drug addicts many unwed mothers amen can go minister to another unwed mother amen that was drawn out from that life many have been prostitutes and now have turned their life around because now they can tell you that it was nobody but the lord that did it many have been in abusive relationships and God that delivered them. So now they can go back and help some other person that's, that has been abused or is being abused to let them know how they got through it. That's why you see so many shelters and, and things open now because they understood that they needed the peace that God had given them. And now God has given them the ability to help somebody else. Does it make them always be comfortable? No. Because God was not about comfortability. 
You think Jesus was comfortable when everywhere he turned, there was a Sadducee, a Pharisee, or a scribe, or somebody coming up against him? Even when they tried to stone him to death, and what he did, he disappeared through the crowd. Sometimes you got to make yourself invisible. Come out of the scene, come out of the situation. Amen. And move on further. Amen. I was just listening to Paul a few minutes ago when they was talking about Paul. Amen. He went over to Philippi. Amen. Amen. And and, and they, they, he was sent there by God. And he was looking for his friend to be there when he got there. So much persecution. Amen. In this Greek city. Amen. He was sent to preach to the to the to the Gentiles. But he didn't find a comfortable place there. So he said, what I got to do, I got to leave this place. And sometimes God will move us. Uh, my old pastor used to say, Pastor Stephen said, you can't even have a chair in your house that's nailed down where you can't move it when it needs to be moved. You shouldn't have furniture that's so heavy that you can't move it when you get ready. Because God is saying, just like he told those Israelites, look, you got to prepare to get out of this city. And that's what God is doing to us now. He's preparing us to get out of this world. As long as we are doing the will of God, the prices can go up sky high if they want to. But God will take care of his own. So the beginning of this new year, I preached before, you haven't been this way before. Guess what? 2022, are we living? We're going to need this word. And we're going to need this fruit of the spirit, all nine of them in us. Going down the highway, somebody will tick you off in a second, in the grocery store, on your job. But you must learn to take and have self-control, which is one of the things we're going to talk about with the fruit of the Spirit. That peace we must have. And when you get God peace, man, good gracious a lot. You're talking about something that's joyful. No matter what they do or say, you still got that peace. Uh, nothing rattles your cage, as the old folks used to say. Amen. Next one we're going to go to is long suffering. Long suffering. I remember one time my brother-in-law was working at the rest home and rehab in Raleigh, right below Crabtree. And we had went there one Sunday after church to minister to the people. And he kept telling us, Pastor, this, this, this lady, I want you to meet. She don't have any legs, but I want you to go in that room. And my God, when we got in that room, you were expecting somebody to be gloom and doom. You was expecting somebody to have hatred in their hearts and wondering why God had done this to them or allowed them to go through this. She had been laying on her bed of affliction for 11 years with no legs but the joy of the lord was her strength she even strengthened us to the most that um it's like the glory of god came into the room she said i don't have nothing to worry about because my god is taking care of me i don't have nothing to worry about because he put a shelter over my head. He gave me a place that I can sleep. He gave me food to eat. I don't have nothing to worry about. And this little suffering that I'm going through, praise God, is a reasonable service that I can do for what he has done for me. When you can think like that, and stop feeling sorry for yourself. A lot of these things that you are in is that you made the decision to get in. 
You didn't consult God. You didn't consult the pastor. You didn't consult a godly person. You took counsel from the ungodly. Now you're stuck with some stuff that you don't know how to get out of. And you're wondering how you're going to get peace. Go back to the scripture that was read in John chapter 14. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. It's not about a home. It's not about a car. It's not about status quo. It's all about Jesus and preparing to go meet him. Soon and very soon. Are there any questions or comments? I, I want you to just take a good look as to why you are here. Why are you on this Zoom Bible study tonight? Why you are still living? Why? 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 Ask yourself, why? Why are you going through what you're going through? What have you done to cause you to go through what you're going through? Have you asked God to come into your life? and give you these fruit of the spirit? Have you sought him to clean up your mind, to clean up your heart, to make your crooked way straight? Have you stopped consulting with people that's not godly? Have you stopped telling your business to the newspaper? The one that's always a tale to tell or tale bearer? and take it to God Almighty. Have you considered having that uh, vertical relationship with him? These are things that we must ourselves take to God. These are things we must consider about our own life. We got to be able to be sheltered from the storm. How are we gonna be sheltered? is that we got to put God first. First and foremost, above everything. He said, thou shall have no other God before him. Some of you have made your houses, your cars, your husband, your wives, your gods, your children. And that causes God to be a jealous God. Some of you have looked for love in all the wrong places. And now you're trying to get revenge of what somebody else done to you. You're getting ready to get another heartbreak. Because if you can't find inner love and inner peace from within, and I have to tell this to women all the time. Why are you looking for love in all the wrong places? When the word of God said that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Why are you making yourself to be so promiscuous? Thinking that because he said that he loved you, he really do. Just because he buy you a pork chop sandwich every once in a while. Or buy you, amen, or take you to the mall. To buy you a few pieces of our clothing that you could buy your own self. What does it cause you? And how do you fit in the kingdom of God? Are you just lackadaisical with your life and thinking that you are not going to have to answer to God one day? Everything we do, we're going to have to answer to God. Everything that we do. Everything that we do to this body, we're going to have to answer to God because he said that this is where the Holy Spirit dwells in. Evangelist, I see you. I'm going to get you. I go ahead, man. I just want you to get a grasp of peace and long suffering and stop saying, woe is me for I am undone. You are not the only one that's going through something, have gone through something, and will go through something. The difference is God wants to get the glory out of your situation. Evangelist? Yes, I, I was 
just wanted to share that when you was asking asking the questions, um, many times coming up through life, even as a child, you know, many things happen to you and you don't understand why they happen to you. And they don't know God and they go to the church and then they get church hurt by those that they entrusted that know God better than I, I would have known God. And they look for them to be a help only to find um, themselves going deeper and dying while sitting there. So, you know, then you, when you get to that place, is you and God only that you have That's to. That's what he wants. And, and, and I understand this now, you know, being one that came through this, um, he wanted a relationship with me. And I was trying to get one with him through others. So, you know, when you start considering your ways and considering uh, um, examining yourself and you was asking these questions, well, why this and why that? God will let you know why. Everything you go through is not just for you. Some things we did put ourselves into and some things came to us. But God to get the glory because he gave us this scripture that says all things will work together for the good of them that love God. So when we start loving on him, it's going to work out for our good. Our hardships, it's going to make us stronger. We're going to be better. And, and we're not going to look at the people, but we're going to recognize the spirits and know the spirits. So when we go out to be a witness, we can know and be more effective to those that, you know, what we've come through. We can see it in others to know that they are going through this and we can help them and be more effective than someone that's never been in that situation. So you can just tell God, thank you for everything that you've been through. And you will have that love and that joy and that peace, that understanding as you're going through the long suffering. You know you're coming out because he said there's no good thing without a hold from you. Amen. A great analysis there. She Amen. said it better than I said it. Amen. But I tell you one thing right there. God wants to get the glory out of your life. He it was a jealous God. And some of the things he took us through, not only you. But the majority of us went through some things that we didn't ask for. But God would take those things that we have went through to make us better and not bitter. And that's why I said a few minutes ago, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we must remember the name of our Lord God. We got to remember that he wants to have that relationship with us. It's not about religion. And a lot of times, young girls and young boys and either middle-aged middle people will go to the pastors of these churches, sheep, uh, wolves in sheep clothing. They end up getting hurt by them, thinking that they are somebody that's godly when they are just a rabbling wolf on the inside waiting to strike you when you're weak. The Bible called them silly women. Because we got to understand that God, he's faithful and, and just. He's not going to put no more on us than we can bear. You may have been, a, been through a lot and you may have done a lot. But God is still faithful. He still forgives you. And he will bring you out of those situations. Do I see your hand up, Sister Patricia? No, ma'am. I, I see the hand waving. I just want to make sure that we understand with clarity what God is doing in this season. So, and, and some people still cannot get over how they was treated when they were younger. Some now have become alcoholics and drug addicts because they are stuck in that one place. Mm -hmm stuck right there they can't see even when they try to pull themselves up they fall right back into the same trap mm -hmm. because they have not yet forgiven themselves right. a lot of things people will put blame on you 
to mm -hmm. make you think that you caused it to happen. Amen, Pastor. When you didn't cause anything. Nope. You were put in a place where you thought that you could trust the people. You thought you could. You thought you could confide in them and they turned that around and made evil out of what you had spoken to them. But God said, even in the midst of that, I would turn it around and make good out of it. Amen. Many ministries have come out of brokenness, heartache and pain. Many organizations have been formed because of these things. So we can't get stuck in what one place, and that is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Evangelist? Yes, ma'am. Um, as you were talking, the scripture came. He said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. See, when you fall, it's because you fell and didn't see that thing. Because if you'd have seen it, you wouldn't have failed. You wouldn't have tripped over it. So when you are blind and, and young and ignorant of things, you have that go through. And, and God will take care of you because you continue to look to him who's able to keep you from falling. Even though you go through the shame of that thing, you know that what the word says and, and God's trying to get us to take him at his word versus what's going on with you. What does the word say considering this thing? You know that the devil is a liar. You know you didn't do this. So now you're learning what spirit this person has in them that's trying to sabotage the, the opportunities for you to come up and come out and be better or, 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 or have a relationship with, with God. But the devil distracts you by the, the person with the title and the position that causes you to pull back and not come forth and the devil knows what to use and how to use it because he knows us better than we know ourselves because just like god um asked the satan have you considered my servant job he said yeah but you got a hedge around him he knows who's the one god is protecting but he has to get permission from god before he touches us from God. Don't think that this Bible study is in vain because many people are going through things now that you have not shared with anybody. Amen. Most of us have been through something that we have not shared with anybody. Or if you have, maybe it's one person that you really can confide in. But I want you to know God knows every situation. I often think about those young girls that the man had down in the basement of his house. How many years they stayed there in captivity? How many of them that he taught to manipulate each other and come against each other? How many of us have been in a situation like that, which still the family tree is, is sort of grown like that? You're in a competitive state when God told us that we should come together and unite in the faith and a touch and agree on any one thing. And that's where we make the mistake of uh, that the, the enemy don't want us to communicate and congregate together. No, mm -hmm. he don't want us to, but God wants us to because he understands their strength in unity. Amen. Yeah. When you are hurting, you don't have to tell nobody. The spirit bear witness to the spirit mm -hmm. because there will be something about you that's abnormally, not yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide it. Mm -hmm. But when you're at the home all by yourself, can't eat, can't sleep, Isolated. can't do nothing, that's of the enemy. Mm -hmm. The more I tell everybody, the more you come out, the more you put some music in that atmosphere, some godly music, you will run the enemy to flight. Mm, amen. And I, like I tell everybody, nobody is scared anymore. <laughs> They're not scared anymore. You can find a dog standing in the middle of the road. That dog will not move. You're just going to have to run him because he ain't moving. 
If you don't duck from him, guess what? He ain't ducking from you. Amen. So if you think that the animals are not afraid, the squirrels used to run away when they saw you come. They yeah, stand there and say, so you know we're living in a dangerous time now. We're living in perilous times. That's why we it's so important that we get and grasp this word. Now, with suddenty, now we so it can illuminate in our hearts and now we can break these chains of bondage that have gone down through generations all those curses it's time for those things to be broken off of your life many are still hurting today but paul realized that if god saved him after killing and martyring so many people and putting them in jail for them to be persecuted, if he can change a wretched sinner like me, he can put me in prison all he wants to. But wherever I go, I'm going to tell everybody about his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. Paul said, you can do it then chain me, beat me, do whatever you want to do. It's okay. But I'm living to live again. That's what life is about, living to live again. And all these fruit of the spirit here is talking about a spirit that Jesus had, starting with love, and still has today. Many people are still out there in the world today, and he's still interceding for their behalf. Because he knows what's on the inside. The enemy don't know everything in, inside of you. Don't he make you think that he knows. But he doesn't know. Do you tell it? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people tell it. Put it in the atmosphere. That's it. But we're going to look at this long suffering. Because so many people are in this state in this time and in this hour right now long suffering it's something that you can endure amen you can endure it as a good soldier because God's word said that we can the Lord is not slack concerning his promise mm -hmm. as some men count slack me, but it is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance that's what it's about not willing that any perish it's not his will that no man perish second peter three and nine ephesians four and two said with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbear one another in love in love People that mistreat you may have been mistreated themselves. That's they didn't right. know nothing but being mistreated. They didn't know how to love because they didn't have nobody to raise them in love. They didn't have nobody to let them know about the fear of the Lord. They didn't have nobody to give them godly counsel. So they did what they saw and they still do what they saw, what they see being done today. Mm -hmm. But God, grace and mercy knows how to pull us up out of those situations. And as evangelist just said a few minutes ago, Romans 8 and 28 say, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. We had to go through something. We got a purpose in it. For his purpose. It's not for our purpose, but it's for his purpose that he may get the glory out of our lives. He will squeeze us just like a lemon that you want to lay down your will and pick up his will. That wine, Pastor. That grape. You got to stump on them grapes. You got to stump on them grapes, but you can squeeze that lemon. Yeah. And you can take that lemon and make some lemonade out. You can take your bad situations. Amen. I've had a lot of bad ones. But I took them and made some good out of them. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Find the good out of it. You can be whatever you want to be if you want to be it. James 4 and 7, this is where the problem is for most. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Got to submit first. That song said, I, render, I surrender all mm -hmm. to the Lord. I surrender everything to him. Then he said, once you submit yourself to the Lord, resist. The devil. Resist the devil. <laughs> resist him. Refuse to let him talk and speak to you. Refuse to let him whisper no good things in your ear. Refuse him not to let you love the way you supposed to love. Refuse him when he tell you don't forgive that person. Refuse him when he tell you that somebody is your enemy. He is your number one enemy. Amen. And when you refuse him or resist him, he will flee from you. Will he come back again just as sure? Yep. When you think you're in a comfortable state. Mm -hmm. Come back you think again. he done all forgot about you? Will he think that God is taking the hedge of protection around you off? He gonna come back and try you again. The same old trick, but in a different way. That's why you got to always be looking and on watch out. Evangelist. Now that goes right back to the um the man with the unclean spirits in Mark 4. Think about how many legions he had in him. Maybe because he didn't resist the devil. He carried those Amen. legions. Amen. He said when he comes to find the house clean, what did he do? <laughs> he, he had to go, he had to go out. He bring what? Bring seven more with him. Seven more with him. That means you got eight along. now. Yep. You got to bring some reinforcements. See that commercial with the man with the, with the little green thing with the nose all stopped up? Mm -hmm. Them boogers. Mm -hmm. You see, they have, they have commercials that they got straight out of the word of God. Mm -hmm. But then they came up with the remedy and that remedy crushed them. What medicine do you need today? Jesus. Mm -hmm only medicine that we need it will cure every every sin every sin sick soul in the world if we resist the devil on myself oh, Matthew 25 and 41 say then shall he say unto you unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepare for the devil and the angels this is what's going to happen when we don't resist the devil. When we don't flee from him and allow him to flee from us. There's going to come a day of reckoning. The place that was made and prepared for the devil and his angels. Those that have not surrendered all what they will <coughs> go to this place. Romans 9 22 say, What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known? And do a much with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. He did it for you and I. The enemy thought that he had won this battle mm -hmm. left my mind. because <laughs> Jesus died. Yes. They thought that it was over with, but my God, what he was doing that was preaching to the captain. Setting those that had never been given this opportunity free. So we got the doubt of ourselves. No more mm -hmm. I but the Christ that liveth on the inside. I don't care what you went through, That's what you right. seen mama go through, what daddy went through, what grandma then went through. God can make a way for us to go through with him. Amen. Stop making excuses. Pastor, excuses would not get us into heaven. Evangelist. That that same that's I keep going back to it, but it, I read it today and you brought it up tonight. But it goes back. Jesus 
people were scared of him. They didn't go to the grave to the tombs where he was, but Jesus knew where he was, and it's he like stepped that. out and went right, and he stepped out of the boat, and the word said that this man, this demon, saw him afar off, and he ran went to him, him. Yeah. ran to him, and, and then he let up off of him just enough so he could humble himself, and then the Lord says, come out of him. Don't speak. Don't say nothing. Don't say a word. Because when the enemy began to speak, he's going to distract somebody else. Yep. That's when he told him to come out of him. Listen, let me tell you something. We have a chance this evening, right now, to ask God to help us in our downtrodden situations. We have a chance right now to commit our ways to his ways. We got a chance right now for him to proclaim our name to his father. We got a chance right now to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will but be thy done. Will. No matter what I got to go through, God, I'm going through it with long suffering. I'm going through it with peace. I'm mm -hmm. going through it with joy. Because the joy of you is my strength. Amen. I'm going through it with love because you are using me in such a time as this. Amen. I'm going through it because you allowed your son to go through it. And if he went through it, there's a yes, greater God. one on the inside of me Thank that you, will Jesus. allow me to go through it as well. Amen. So I give myself away to you. Ooh, so, so you, you can, can use, use me anytime, anyway. Yes, yes, yes. We got to, we must surrender our all to the Lord. Amen. It's been a wonderful time spent with you tonight. I pray God blessing upon you. But go back and continue to study the fruit of the spirit. Amen. We'll be talking again about a little long suffering gentleness going right on down the line. Amen. I know the time run by fast, but I pray in the name of Jesus that you have some substance tonight. That you can dine, amen. Maybe you can sop a little gravy tonight. Mm -hmm. Mix it, amen, amen, with a little juice, amen, that you made, amen, and, and, and whatever <laughs> the Lord allows you to do. Do it with love and mm -hmm. with openness and forgiveness. Let us pray. Hey, Father God, we thank you now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We we praise you and we give you glory tonight, God, for this hour, God, that you allowed a few of your people to come thank together, you. God. Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit showing up, God, in the midst, God. We thank you, God, for the word, God, that illuminates in our heart. And we pray, God, that somebody would change for the betterment. We yes, praise God. you through your son, Jesus Christ's name. We lift you up and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, listen, listen. Next week is coming and there's going to be another powerful lesson. Amen. amen. That we can study God's word again. Amen. Yes. If you have any questions, amen, all during the week, just send them to me. Amen. And we will do what God is telling us to do by answering your question. You're going to say your long suffering? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Amen. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Love y'all. Love y'all. Good night. Love you all. Good night. Love you all. I love you, Pastor. I love you more. <laughs> hey, Sister Aisha, love you.